Hi, everybody. I am here with Binfield manager Gary Haylock. This one's been a little bit of a long time coming. Um, Gary, I, I got in touch with Gary quite a while ago, but owing to mostly mostly me, um, in fact, almost entirely me, um, it's taken quite a while to, to get Gary uh, and, and I together. Um, Gary, hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good to be here. Um, you've got a little bit of time off um, this morning. You, you work with kids most most of the time. Um, well, tell me a little bit about that and what, what, you, what you do for a day job. Um, I deliver PE in primary schools. Um, so I have a contract with a, a school in Hounslow that I do quite a lot of work in. And I've um, started then to kind of spread my wings a little bit. And I'm working at Binfield Primary and King's Academy Primary. Ah, so you've, you've, got, uh, you've got an insight into the, the talent coming through that could be available to you going forward. Hopefully, yes, hopefully. <laughs> ah, that's, that's really good. Um, I, I've been doing a little bit of research, Gary. As, as you as you well know, um, uh, I, we've we've chatted a little bit about your time in Ireland and stuff, and I want to come on to that because I I find that absolutely fascinating. Um, but you 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 are the Binfield manager. You've been the Binfield manager since um sort of uh, halfway through um the start of the season. If that make does that make sense? What was it? October, November oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. October, I think. Um, I, I want to just uh, you, you, you. I feel like you, you've come, you've, you've maybe you, you started uh, your managerial career at Yedding, and in that period when Yedding became Hayes and Yedding United, so, so that was a club quite high, uh, you know, sort of National League South, that kind of level, and, and now, and now you've you've come down to, and I, and I, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm um, talking down about about Binfield Football Club because I'm, I'm certainly not, but you, you've taken a couple of steps down to to manage at Binfield. What what's the motivation to do that? Um, well, how long have you got, really? Um, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> a while. Spent some time, obviously, uh, Yedding um, at, in Conference South, and then at the end of that first season, the club merged with Hayes, Conference South, had two years there, and then got promoted to the conference. Um, did a couple of years in the conference, then went to Farnborough in the Conference South, and then from there, I had a, a short spell at Bedfont in the, um, I think it was the wall level below this one, step five, I think it was, um, step four, step five, I can't remember which one it was. Um, and then went to Exeter City, um, then back to Hayes and Yedding, uh, and then to Bedfont and Feltham, um, and, else in between. Um, and then kind of, I won't say fell out of love with it, because I, I think the game doesn't change, but um, on the managerial side of things, there can be uh, some challenges that, to be honest, at times um, are very difficult to take. Um, and it got to a point where I'd had enough, to be honest. Um, I, my day job um, was getting quite busy, and I went, you know what, I, I just don't need this kind of hassle. Um, so I went back to scouting, did a lot of scouting for um, um, Gary Bowyer, who was the Blackpool manager at the time. Um, we got promoted to League One, and then when he went to Bradford, did some scouting for him. Um, did a couple more FA courses and did little bits and pieces. Um, and then lockdown kicked in and didn't really, there wasn't really any kind of opportunities then. So um, I dealt with lockdown. And then when I came out of lockdown, I wanted to do, I was very keen to do a uh, project on throw-ins. Very keen. Um, something that I've always kind of played around with. So I wanted to go watch a team whose games were videoed um, and who suited my um, schedule. So um, I approached Haven Waterlooville, who the manager and assistant manager I knew quite well. Um, and I ended up, um, I wanted to just get their videos each week um, and I ended up in the dressing room each week um, <laughs> and that was last season um, I didn't really have a lot to say um, but just kind of watched and, and gave an opinion when asked um, did my project on, on throw-ins um, and that, but that gave me a little bit of a taste to get back into the dressing room um, so from probably February of last year I started looking around and, and what I needed was somewhere that was um, suited my schedule suited my um, geography, um, and um, I was actually targeting a couple of other clubs in our league, um, two in particular that I had interviews with, um, and got down to kind of last two or three, didn't get the job, um, but in the course of that, I came to came to Binfield to watch a game in February, which was the first time I'd ever been to um, Binfield, which was crazy because it's only I think, 19 minutes from my house, which and I've been to hundreds of football grounds around the south mm. of England, but never been to Binfield. And uh, I met the chairman, got on really well, um, and just left it then. And then, so at the start of this season, I started watching games a little bit more seriously. Um, and I had, I've got a scout that works with me, 
um, and I asked him to go to the Tunbridge game. Um, he came to watch Tunbridge game. Just to, and what I was doing was building up information on the teams in our league. Mm. Um, and then around that, um, I think on the Monday, I sent Andy a message just saying thanks for the ticket. This guy came to watch the game, and I think I went to Merthyrsome or Westfield. Um, and uh, Andy said, look, what are you doing this week? And I said, not a lot. He said, come in and have a chat. And I think at that stage, he, he knew that the that Jamie yeah. and Carl were going to go. Um, I had the conversation, I think, on Wednesday, came in again on Friday, and was off the job on the Sunday. So quite a, quite a quick turnaround, really, from, yeah. from that. I think Andy, Andy had an idea before I did. Uh, right. To be honest, um, Binfield were not on my radar at all because my view is that the, the, the teams at the top of the league don't they don't change their managers. The yeah. At the bottom of the league do. So I was kind of looking at there was a number of other clubs, three or four that I was I was looking at that I thought actually they might come up. So I wanted as much knowledge as possible. Um, and then the Binfield job came up, and it was a big surprise. It's um it's it's been a bit of a you've obviously had some some sort of some big shoes to fill there. Uh, in the end, have you sort of taken that in your stride a little bit, and and because because you, you've got a couple of uh, of old old stages with you as well. You've got uh, you got Roger Herridge alongside you and Keith Pennicott Bowen, who both of those who we know well here. Um, is it was that important to have have that kind of kind of kind of people around? Um, I suppose people that knew the league um, mm. knew the level um, was important, certainly initially. Um, although I'd built up a. Um, a store of knowledge, if you like, and, and watch the. I'd probably seen by the time I got the job, I'd probably seen twelve teams myself, and the scout had seen another four or five. So I, I had an understanding. Um, I didn't know a lot of the players because usually I'd worked higher. Um, big shoes to fill. Um, I suppose there'd been some success. Yeah. Um, but I, I look at it that I was coming from. I think my background is conference football. Yeah. Um, and. Um, the game doesn't change, but I think the way um, how do I put this attitudes are applied and, and, and the way things are done changes as, as you go higher and lower. Um, and having I played at a decent level, um, managed and coached at quite a decent level, and then this is probably um, the, ooh, probably about as low as I've been before. And, and yeah, there's been some some challenges, um, but to be honest, I've always been quite confident in in the way I do things. Um, there were some challenges for the players as well because there were some expectations put on them straight away. Um, and I suppose having Roger and Keith around um, helps that. Um, but I'd be very hands-on. Um, I never, last two or three jobs that I've had, I never took anybody with me. I always mm. work with whoever was there. Um, and as long as they do a good job, then they'll stay. Um, but the, the big thing that I wanted from the chairman was that I'm in charge of the football side. Um, yeah. I make the decisions on staff, on players on systems, on, on who plays, etc. And if that ever changes, then I'll walk away from it. Um, because I, I'd like to be judged on what I do. And the team now is is my team and they play the way I want them to play. And um, we had we had some success at some point and then we had five or six games where we got beat. Um, and both of those were my fault. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, and that's the way I'd like it to be. And I'd be judged on, on results. And that's kind of the way it has to be. I, I, I get the feeling that you know you you very much know know your own mind. You know how you want things to go. Um, I, I but I also get the feeling you wouldn't have taken this Binfield job and, and having spoken to you sort of um, for various other bits on other, but you wouldn't have taken this Binfield job if you didn't think you could get this club higher in the the, the pyramid. Uh, am I right in assuming that? Um, I think the, the biggest thing was the chairman. Um, mm. I have uh, there was a line from Alex Ferguson in that you don't sign for a club, you sign for a chairman. Um, and I'm 52 years old now. I've been through, I think I had 22 moves as a player. I think I've been involved, coached or managed in 10 or 12 clubs. Um, and that relationship between the chairman and the manager is the most critical in the football club. Um, and um, this is probably, I'm sure he'll listen to this at some point. But <laughs> probably, he's probably the best chairman that I've worked for. Um, really genuine, nice guy. Um, wants success. has got an idea of what he wants, but he's wide open to things. Um, and um, and yeah, he's been he's been excellent. And uh, yeah, I think I'm in a good situation in that I don't need the job, um, and I don't want to be in that situation. I, I've been asked in, in the past if I'd be interested in full time jobs. I've done talent ID level three. I've done the pro license. I would have a lot of contacts in the professional game, and I think I could get a, a decent academy job. But I don't want to put all my eggs in the in the footballing basket, if you like. It's um, it, it's it's a very fraught industry, and and 
I've seen so many managers and coaches be sacked through things that are just ridiculous. Mm. You kind of go, I don't want that kind of level of um, fragility in my life. Um, and so I'm quite comfortable with the fact that I could walk away um, from the Binfield job right now and um, it wouldn't affect my life a huge amount apart from giving me more time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that's a really that's a really positive position to be in, and I guess. But and and that that kind of I suppose takes a little bit of pressure off you personally, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah, and, and I mean the biggest thing about it was that the, the chairman said, "Look, if we win six games or we lose six games, you're not getting sacked. It doesn't matter. It, not that it doesn't matter, but it's this is a long term project. Yeah, um, and that's where I wanted. I there was a couple of jobs that came up that I interviewed for that I look back now and think actually if I'd have taken them, I would be in a different situation now. Um, and so I really like this, but it's a blank page. Um, and the club is going to go through a period of transition um, in the way it operates. And it, um, it's going to be exciting to be a part of. And, and that's what I wanted, a project. And you don't, you don't get that in football. It's, um, you, know, you could go in higher, but with more money and, and kind of more input from other people, then the, the pressures come and, and it becomes about results. And, and you know, results do matter. And I desperately want yeah. to get promoted this year. Um, and if not this year, then next year. And if not next year, the year after. But if we don't, there are other factors that are involved in, in building the club, and, and that's what I want to be part of. That's really, that's really nice. Uh, it's really good to hear, Gary, because it's uh, obviously you. You mentioned about them, you know, him being one of the one of the best chairmen you've you've worked with. That, that's pretty good. He's only been doing it for. I mean, I know I know he's he's run businesses and stuff, but as a football club chairman, he's not been doing it for very long. So he's 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 he started off fairly well then. Yeah, I don't think he's been on the course that all chairmen go on. Um, as yet. I'm sure he will. I've It'll change. Thought, you take um, you take uh, somebody who does very well, exceptionally well in business, and and they come into football and they're complete and utter fools. Um, and I've always said that there's a course the chairman must go on to teach them how to make stupid decisions. <laughs> I, I don't think Andy's been on that course yet. I'm sure it's coming uh, at some point. But um, you, know, you get these these guys that are incredible businessmen that have made yeah. millions of pounds, and then they go and do something really ridiculous. I think that they can, they've got better ideas than a, a person who's been in the job for 30 years. I wouldn't, <laughs> I, I wouldn't dream of telling Andy how to run a coach business. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he'd dream of telling me how to, to operate a, a, a football dressing room. It's uh, it's it's inter- I'm always interested in that dynamic. We've had we've had quite a few managers on on our podcast, and uh, and they all say very very similar things. Uh, and and you can see the relationships between the managers and the chairman when you go around clubs that are good, um, because largely because they've been there for quite a while. Um, th- those those managers. So that's um, that's always good to know. Um, I am itching to talk about your playing career, Gary. Um, so if if you don't mind, if we can do that, I I, I saw um, I, I've been through. I want to I want to understand you. Obviously, you had you had quite the career in Ireland. Um, I, I also oh sorry, I, let me just go back one because I, I was just doing a bit of research last night before talking to you, um, and the one I think it was the Belfast Telegraph had made a, a lovely headline about um, you're managing Binfield, but you wouldn't mind managing Linfield, uh, and I thought that was a rather nice headline. I, I've been to watch Linfield, and that's um, at, at Windsor Park, and uh, I, 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 that's quite a nice headline. Um, but obviously, um, is, is that an ambition? Would would you love to manage? A, uh, would you, would you like to be? the manager of a, of a of a of a sort of top level pro side is that would that be an ambition or is or do you think that's it, it always was i'll be honest it was mm. it was always was as a player um, um i always wanted to play for liverpool mm. um, and as a manager that would be my dream job liverpool or england um i think realistically now that that opportunity has passed me by um <laughs> i did say to my uh, to my wife when i was um when i reached 50 that i've finally given up on my dream of playing in the premier league yeah, um, she just looked at me and called me an idiot. But um, <laughs> it's um, and so, but I think realism kicked in for me quite early. Um, um, I, I'm, I look back on my playing career and I had an incredible time. I, I really enjoyed it. I had a, a lot of fun, um, and it was some fantastic times. Met some great people, um, involved in great clubs, um, and it could have been very different. I, I've got a friend who played 500 games for Huddersfield Town. Um, and he always says to me that I wish I'd had your career mm. uh, because I went abroad and, and lived abroad and won things and played in Europe and, and kind of travelled. And um, and he, although he played 500 times for Huddersfield Town, he um, um, he felt bored by it. He never got promoted. Well, he got promoted once and relegated once, and that was it. Whereas mm. I was fortunate to win quite a lot and, and mm. kind of have some great experiences. You um, 
one of the one of the guys I spoke to, I've got a, I've got a couple of friends in the Irish media, and one of the guys I spoke to is now head of um, the, the 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 sort of the Daily Mirror reach operation um, over in Ireland, the Irish Mirror essentially. Um, and but he he said um, he told me you guaranteed goals. Um, was that was that, that that was that something you kind of did you enjoy that? Was, was yeah. that uh, the best thing about playing football is scoring goals? Mm. Um, and I I kind of a very I think I've come across one guy who's who's now a championship manager, who um, he said he doesn't like that. He, he said he, he's a defender and he always enjoyed um, looking at a well-organised back four. Um, and he's odd. He's very odd. He's always been very <laughs> um, But yeah, scoring goals was, was the best part about it. And when I was younger, that was all I was interested in. I remember losing a game 4-3 in, um, in Ireland and being very pleased with myself because I'd scored a hat-trick. Um, <laughs> as I got older, you kind of become, uh, you, you get a better sense of, um, of what's required and, and to win games and, and didn't score as many goals when I got older because I played in a different way. But yeah, I scored a lot of goals, um, won a lot of things, um, and, uh, and like I say, really enjoyed it. There's nothing mm. like winning things. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I would, I did very well financially, but I would give up an awful lot of money for another league championship. Um, I have to say, it was, um, those were the best times. That's that's kind of the point of it. It just drives me on a slight tangent. It it drives me crazy when I see um, pundits and people talking about how um, you shouldn't be celebrating because you've you've you you know that's you know it's it's an Arsenal. I wouldn't say I'm certainly not an Arsenal fan, but it annoys me when people get annoyed at Arsenal players for celebrating winning a football match. It's that that's what you're there for, isn't it? That's the yeah, point. I mean, I think. You can get um, <laughs> respected, though. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I used to say that anybody who works, celebrates a goal wildly doesn't score a lot of goals. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I can I can vouch goals. for that, definitely. I got over 350 goals, and um, some, I scored in cup finals, I scored in Europe. Um, and it was, to me, it was my job, and it gave me a, a fantastic sense of satisfaction. But I, I always thought, well, you know, go get another one. Um, yeah. I never scored in, in you know, a, a a massive game. Um, I mean, FA Cup finals are a big game, but it was the Irish um, FA Cup final um, rather than the FA Cup final here. But you know, I I've always taken the view that when you when you look back on your career, I don't look back on the money that I made or the deals that I did. Um, I look back on the trophies that I won, um, and that's that's what it's about. As a manager, I've had um, one promotion and one relegation, and I don't think that's that's enough success to be honest. Um, and, and that's what I'm looking for. I, it's promotions and, and winning things that make make a difference. Mm. Well, that, that certainly bodes well for for Binfield um, going forward. Certainly, um, I, I note. I think you played for eight Irish sides, both north and south of the border. Um, I may have counted one or two once or twice. I'm not sure. Well, um, there was one or two one or two um, lawn moves on a on yeah. Division. Um, but I, I did I did enjoy a move to be honest. I I think I I, I could read a dressing room quite well, and if things weren't going well. Um, I didn't mind a, um, a move, and in in Ireland because of the border, um, it was you needed an ICC. But um, I was on first name terms with the um, the girls at the FA in both north and south of the border, and it was quite comfortable for me. And I knew the travel arrangements, I knew how to do it. Um, mm. And it was although it was only 100 miles at the time in the, the mid 90s, it was um, it was a difficult journey, but it got a lot easier. I, I actually yeah. Sunday and. And did the journey, and it hits a lot quicker now than it used to be. <laughs> it's um, it, it was an interesting time. I don't, I don't want to delve too deeply into the politics. If anybody wants to read about Ireland in the nineties, they can go and Google it, and that's absolutely fine. But it was a really interesting time, I suppose, for a, probably an Englishman to be over in in Ireland, jumping between North Northern Ireland and, and the Republic of Ireland. Um, you know, playing for Linfield, playing for Shamrock Rovers, jumping between the two like that. Um, you, there, there must be, there must be the odd story. I know you, you sort of told me off, uh, off record um, about about a couple of moves that you had that were that were very interesting. Um, but um, so, uh, which one? Where, where did you feel most at home when you were in Ireland? Um, I suppose that's a difficult. Probably Shelburne. Um, I went there when I was I think nineteen um, and did a, um, a lawn move and really enjoyed it. And the the guy in charge of the club really looked after me. Um, really nice guy. Um, had a bit of a checkered past himself, um, and was was an interesting character. And the club was starting, just starting on a journey that saw them um, get to the point where they were one goal away from qualifying for the Champions League. Mm. Um, and I was a part of that for a long time. 
um, generally on loan from Huddersfield and backwards and forwards, but um, but always enjoyed the club and, and felt most probably most at home there. Um, a couple of years at Linfield, three at Border Down, and then shorter spells at, at Chamber Provers. And I uh, enjoyed Dundalk, um, although we didn't have, we won the FA Cup, but got relegated, relegated the same season. So it was um, a kind of a, a difficult time there, but probably Shelburne was the club where I, because that's where I felt I grew up. Huddersfield Town and, and Shelburne were the mm. club that I, I grew up at. Um, so it was, um, they were probably the, the ones that I've got most affinity to. You you just um, you may have just jogged my memory ever so slightly. Um, just looking at the dates of when you were at Shelburne, did you play in a European game against Lille? Uh, no, we played. Where did we go? I went to Tavria Simferopol um, in the Ukraine. Um, I went to, uh, and then when I went back, and that's that year. Then when I went back, we went to. Oh, we went everywhere. We went to Switzerland, Denmark. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'd have to write it down. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a hard one. We, I, I only ask because I, I remember it, it may well have been may well have been mid noughties but um, a few of us went over to watch um, Shelbourne, oh well, Lille v Shelbourne um, in a in a European competition. I, for, I forget which, but that, it just I wondered if the dates coincided, but but uh, obviously obviously not. Um, Porter Down, my 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 colleague speaks very highly of you up during your time at Porter Down, um, and and that seemed that that's one that you know they I think they'd still have you now, Gary. Um, but from the sounds of things, um, about that. It, it didn't end so well there. Um, the um, the manager was an, uh, again was an interesting character, longest serving manager um, ever, um, longer than Ferguson, longer than um, Arsene Wenger. Um, at the time when he was there, I think guy at um, Oxera has, has been there longer. But um, yeah, he was. I was a favourite of his. He chased me for a long time. Um, got there and then I had some personal issues, um, which meant my final season wasn't great mm. um, and um, I then so at the end of that season I, I decided I took a week off and then went back early and, and worked really really hard and I was desperate to do really well that following season and he let me go um, yeah. which was a bit silly because I was on fire and I ended up going to Greece and doing really well in Greece um, and having a really good season there um, and then he they came back and tried to get more money from, from the club which caused a few problems so mm. It didn't end particularly well there, but it was um, Potterdown was a different kind of club. They um, they were used to getting at Linfield. They wanted everybody training, the group together, wanted to build a culture. Whereas at Potterdown, they knew they had to. They were getting players in from Scotland. Mm. Um, I came from the south, and another guy came up from the south. So we ended up with four or five guys coming from the south, which makes it difficult because we were all training with different clubs in, in Dublin, and the um, the Potterdown lads were all training together. And it, it, there was a bit of a divide there, and it was uh, it was difficult to build a culture there. It was always it always seemed to be a, a, a transient club where there'd always be players coming in now. Um, and looking back, it, I probably probably should have spent more time up there. But um, when you're living in Dublin and you're paying yeah. money to, to just to travel up and down, that was kind of the way forward for us. Um, and, and I'm just curious, obviously, because the, the the Greek the Greek journey does does stand out. How how does how does something like that happen? Because I, I didn't I was I was going to cover this off when that kind of moved to Shelbourne in the first place. But um, how does something like that come about? Because obviously you're 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 in a different sphere of, of of football to what I'm used to talking about to what I'm used to talking to people about. So when you're at Huddersfield Town, um, you know, you is that just is that just how does that happen? How do you end up going to a Shelbourne and then subsequently, how do you end up getting, is, is it agents? Is it just, um, you hear well, something? I only had an agent once. Um, I did um, um, a business studies degree at night school. Um, I was uh, quite intelligent acad- academically and um, I left school at 16 to be an apprentice, but did extra courses and the PFA were excellent and have been excellent throughout my career um, in supporting me. So I did a business studies um, degree and um, always felt I had a handle on, on business and, and what I wanted, et cetera. The move to Shelbourne was um, the manager at Huddersfield Town was called Owen Hand, and he was the Irish manager before Jack Charlton. Ah. And so he had a lot of contact. So when um, he, at every single club, there's players who can't get in the team who probably should be in the team. And at Huddersfield, we just happened to have a, a, a plethora of um, centre forwards. And... They had one senior guy who was over there on loan, an Irish guy, um, and they, Shelburne needed another striker. Um, and the guy recommended me. And I remember the manager pulling me in on a Wednesday saying, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, definitely. Because I was 19, so I was too old to the under-18s, um, and I couldn't get in the reserves, so mm. I wasn't playing. 
and I just wanted to play. Um, I went over, and we used to fly in for the weekend. So we'd fly in Saturday morning, train Saturday, uh, play Sunday, and then fly home Monday. Um, the first week, we lost one of the court. Second week, I scored a hat-trick, and we, uh, we got beat 4-3. Um, and I did a month, and then they extended it um, to three months and did quite well, and then went back the following year and did even better. And then the third year, I went back and did a season-long loan, and we won the league. Um, so that was 1992, I think it was. Um, and then I signed, did a year, and we, did, we won the FA Cup. So it came back through Owen, Owen Hand, who's, um, who's always been a good guy. Um, mm. He went back to Ireland and was commentating um, on games. And um, there's a game in 2002 where I scored the winning goal in the cup final, and he was the commentator. Um, and he was very uh, complimentary. I think, I think he liked it because it reflected well on him because he's the one that sent me over there. Um, <laughs> so, Owen's a good guy. So, so that was the, the connection there. Um, going to Greece, um, the final year at Porter Down, I, I decided to go back early and train. And in the south, it was summer football. So uh, yeah. I went in to train with Shamrock Rovers, who the manager was. The manager at Shamrock Rovers was the guy who was at Huddersfield, who'd gone on, who, who got me, literally got me over to Ireland in the first place. Um, so I went in and trained with them, and I was I was fired up. I was I was really keen. And um, the manager in Greece was um, a guy called Ronnie Whelan. Used to play oh yes, Greece. yeah. So Ronnie um, was looking for free transfers, um, <clears throat> players, and he tried to sign a guy called Tony Cousins, who was at Shamrock Rovers, but um, had just signed a new contract. He had been at Liverpool, and Ronnie knew him. Um, and Ronnie's brother played for Shamrock Rovers. Um, so he, when he rang his brother, his brother said, look, Tony's just signing your contract, but we've got a lad training with us who, who says that he's um, a free transfer. So um, I, um, what did I do? I went over to Greece for a week, um, came back. We stayed at Bisham Abbey and we played, I think we played Oxford, Farnborough, Exeter and somebody else. And I scored a few goals um, and then they offered me a deal. So I then went back to Greece and, and signed a deal. Um, and that was it was a two year deal, but the club was um, how should we say this? It wasn't the best organised club. Mm. And the last last three months, I didn't get paid, um, and in the end, I walked out, um, rescinded my con- contract through FIFA and sued the club through FIFA, and eventually got all the money. But it took about eighteen months. Yeah. But football wise, it was a and, and lifestyle. It was a fantastic experience. I loved it. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, um, Full time and trained twice a day, but we trained at six in the morning and six at night because the weather was so hot during the day. Um, and your whole day was built around football. And mm. I probably played the best football in my career there. And when I came back, I went back to Shelburne and um, did um, and had a really good season that year. We won the double. It's um, Is it the kind of thing that, that I can see that perhaps it's not for everyone, sort of get getting abroad and stuff like that, but is it, I presume it's something you'd recommend to any player, especially if they had the, the sort of the, the, the opportunity to do so? Yeah, yeah. Thing is, you need to go to the right kind of club. You need to go mm. to the kind of club that supports you. I mean, I I was quite independent, um, and so within a month of being there, I had my bank accounts, I had um, an apartment, I had a car, everything was organised. Um, a lot of footballers are not like that. Mm. Uh, I mean, most clubs now have player care um, staff, and they look after them. But I think that tends to um, reduce the, the player's level of independence. I enjoyed, I mean, I, I know an awful lot about Athens. I know my way around Athens. Mm. The afternoons, I'd go for a drive and kind of, you know, I was, I was all over the place. And, and I've got a lot of knowledge about the country and the, and the city now um, based on the fact that I, I went out there and did it myself. Um, I, I, I know the groundsman at Panathinaikos um, because I went in and got me on the pitch and started wandering. Um, and you start to meet people. And mm. whereas... I see footballers coming over here and, and certainly English players abroad, they don't tend to, to immerse themselves in the culture and, and just get to know the place. You know, yeah. Every place has its has its good and bad points and Athens certainly was that um, and had those. But yeah, there was a lot of enjoyment there. Um, things went a bit pear-shaped towards the end, but we got out and, and I turned a couple of clubs down in England because my wife at the time wanted to go back to Ireland. She was Irish. And so we just went straight back to Ireland, whereas yeah. I probably should have bounced through England um, Turned down a deal with um, Orient and somebody else. I don't remember who the other one was. I turned two deals down to go back to Ireland. Um, and it was, you know, I, I, that's probably a regret. Probably should have come straight back to England and, and stayed in England for a little while. 
I thought, Gary, that was uh, that was, that was really good to to kind of go through some of those bits and, and pieces. I, I'm absolutely fascinated by your by your career in Ireland. It's uh, I, I think I think it's really if I if I had any sort of ability and 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 was getting getting a tap on the shoulder like that, I'd have loved to have done something something along those lines. Fortunately, uh, Ireland didn't have to suffer watching me try to play football. Um, which which um, and I wanted to just again something popped into my head when you were talking about your throw-ins project. Um, level with me is isn't receiving the ball from a throw-in the hardest skill in football I've, i'm convinced it is well, it depends doesn't it how much <laughs> do you do on it? Yeah. well yeah none you, you practice these things and um, <laughs> you know, there's um i looked into the type of throw um the direction of the throw where it was on the pitch uh, and came up with some quite clear um um conclusions on that which supported another um um, study done by a guy called Anthony Barry, who's um, who was a coach at, um, at the Ireland national team. I, don't, I think he was at Chelsea as well. I'm not sure where he is now. Um, but I did it um, literally all of Haven't Award Louisville's um, throw-ins and goal kicks last, mm. last season. I've got them on video and I've logged them where they yeah. went, what they did, what happened afterwards, um, and what could have happened. Um, and so it, it's um, you know, it kind of backed up what I did. It's not something I wanted to do long term, but it was something that I quite fancied doing. And, and last year, I had the time to do it. Um, so uh, yeah, it depends. It's, there's, there's a lot of difficult things in football. Yeah. I've always thought that centre forwards have the most difficult job because they face the wrong way. Yes, well, this is this is true. It's the only player on the pitch that faces the wrong way. Um, and so <laughs> it's um, anybody who's got that kind of level of quality that can play centre forward is for me it's the the most important job on the pitch. Um, let's just let's just finish off with a couple of uh, couple of quick fire questions. Then, what what would you say out of all of the moments? What what was your your kind of your proudest moment um, in football? Um, probably winning the league for the first time. That first one is always um, important. So, nineteen ninety two, we went to um, we played at home on St Patrick's Day against Derry City. This was Shelburne, yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. they were top. We were second, and we had the goalkeeper <laughs> sent off after twenty seven seconds. It was live on TV. It was four thousand people there. Um, I ended up in goal for the first half. Um, <laughs> we had another player sent off and we lost the game 5-0. And that was it then. We were, I think we were four points behind them and, and the league was over. We then went and won the next six games um, very, very well. We had some, some exceptional players um, and won it in Dundalk on the second, second last day of the season, I think it was. And that was um, yeah, winning the league for the first time. The club hadn't won it for 30 years. Um, I'd never won one before. Um, and that, that kind of stands out and the other th- probably the other three league championships as well were, were the next three highest ones. Winning, winning the league means you're the best team. And, um, that's always a, a great achievement. Um, and a, as, as a manager, what's the, you know, when, when you come into a club especially, what's the one thing you're looking for? What's the one thing you need, you want to get right first when you when you go into a club? What What, what is that thing that you feel like is going to set the standard for, for may, maybe it's a player particular player in a position or or something just within the culture of the club what's that thing that's going to set the standard for how Gary Haylock wants to run the team um, the players I always say the, the two things I always say to the players is turn up on time and turn up ready to work and if, you, if you've got those two things then you've got respect for yourself and respect for your teammates and I like to think that because I've got a very clear idea of what I want from, from a team then I can give them everything else um a friend of mine, I grew up with a guy called um, Eddie Boothroyd, who yep. was the 21s manager and Watford manager in the Premier League. And he said there are three most there are three things in football that are the most important things. And if you've got those, then um, you, you can do anything. And the first one is attitude. The second one is attitude. And the third one is attitude. <laughs> I watched him give a talk to, to um, on the pro license. Yeah, it was a pro license. Um, he came and gave a talk, and that's what he said. And he said, you should be able to give them everything else, where, the, where to stand, how to play, etc. Yeah. If they've got the right attitude, then you've got um, you've got a chance. And coming into the club, I, I think we've got that. And, and and I'll just finish off just with a with a little bit of a, uh, put you on the spot. Where are Binfield finishing this season? Playoffs. Winning the playoffs. Uh, I think that's a that's a a, diff, a more difficult question because it's it's that there's a lot more specific things to it. Yes. But I think, <laughs> My view is if we don't finish in the playoffs, it's a disappointing season. Yeah. If we do finish in the playoffs, it's a good season. And if we get promoted or not, I think that kind of that'll be the icing on the cake. But I think the fact that the team is capable of doing it, not getting into the playoffs is a um, would be a disappointment. Uh, Gary Haylock, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast today. No worries. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much.